with their big stars, fast car chases, iconic one-liners. I'll be back. Gratuitous violence and massive explosions, few experiences offer the heart-pounding thrills of a good action movie. Early action films contained many of the elements that have come to define the genre, but they could be placed in other categories. Action sequences were woven into many martial arts movies and westerns, with stars like John Wayne and later Chuck Norris, Clint Eastwood, and Bruce Lee dominating the box office. An early pioneer of the modern action film was the James Bond franchise, which had Ian Fleming's iconic secret agent, Bond. James Bond. Engaging in hand to hand combat, car chases, jumping out of airplanes, and using state of the art gadgets to take down his foes. Crucially, the franchise pioneered the idea of the one man army, a protagonist so strong and so resourceful that he could overcome the odds and single handedly defeat his enemies, even when vastly outnumbered. Yet it wasn't until the 1980s that the modern action movie really came into being. It arguably started with 1981's Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Though it still contained many elements of an adventure movie, it immersed viewers in nearly non-stop action. Starting with the opening sequence, Harrison Ford's Jones dodges a boulder, leaps over a giant hole, evades poison darts. He even encounters snakes on a plane decades before Samuel L. Jackson. There's a big snake in the plane, Jacques! It was 1981's First Blood, however, that really solidified the muscle-bound action star as one-man army trope. In it, Sylvester Stallone plays John Rambo, a Vietnam vet turned drifter. He happens into the wrong town where he comes across the wrong sheriff. The police officer doesn't want hobos in his town, and all Rambo wants is a bite to eat. They drew first blood, not me. When Rambo, who's clearly suffering from PTSD, escapes police custody, law enforcement throw everything they have at the highly trained former special forces officer. But they prove to be no match for him. His former commanding officer even shows up not to defend Rambo, but to protect the police officers from him. Rambo's a civilian now. He's my problem. I don't think you understand. I didn't come here to rescue Rambo from you. I came here to rescue you from him. Other films from the era helped define the genre and launched long-running franchises. Movies like The Terminator, Commando, Predator, and Robocop. Many of them told unique stories and introduced innovative plot twists, such as casting action star as the villain in The Terminator. But they generally had one thing in common— the archetypal beefcake action star that no mere mortal would dare get on the wrong side of. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Until Die Hard changed the genre forever. The 1988 classic could have been a much different movie as both Stallone and Arnold Schwarzenegger turned down the role. Bruce Willis, who was eventually cast as John McClane, has now been cemented in the collective consciousness as the star of big-budget action films. But in the late 80s, he was known as a television heartthrob. When audiences first saw previews of Die Hard, they laughed at the sight of Willis in the role. The studio initially took his mugshot off the movie poster. Rather than the typical roid head, Willis's character was seen as more of an average Joe. Due to circumstances beyond his control, he was thrust into a perilous situation that brought out the best in him. Through brains, not just brawn, he overcame the odds. Audiences quickly caught on, forever shattering the stereotype of what an action star is supposed to look like. Leading men and women with actual acting ability were cast in these roles now. The format has been copied so many times it hardly seems novel anymore, with films like Under Siege, Speed, and The Rock using a similar formula. But there's no denying that Die Hard set the precedent. The 90s saw numerous Die Hard sequels and ripoffs, as well as the continuation of some of the iconic franchises, but also a number of new hits like True Lies, Face Off, and Con Air. The decade's biggest innovation was the advent of computer-generated imagery. Look at the sculpture of Schwarzenegger's face used in the original Terminator. Now see the shape-shifting liquid metal seen in the sequel. 90s-era CGI is often rightly criticized for adding overly shiny or cartoonish elements to films. Some were able to expertly use the technology, including 1991's Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Perhaps one of the few examples of a sequel widely thought to be better than the original, T2 saw Schwarzenegger revise his role as a time-traveling robot. But this time, as the good guy, trying to save John and Sarah Connor from the more advanced T-1000. The shape-shifting T-1000 played by Robert Patrick was perfectly suited for early CGI, which tended to lack texture as it was portrayed as a shiny liquid metal in its transitionary state. 
Other films, such as 1999's The Matrix, would use CGI and advanced filmmaking techniques to pioneer a new genre of sci-fi action movies. The tail end of the 20th century would also witness the rise of superhero movies. Tim Burton's 1989 Batman saw great success and led to a string of sequels through the 90s. But it was Marvel's invasion of the silver screen that would cement the superhero genre and overtake action movies, at least for a time. At the turn of the century, those seeking thrills at the box office had few choices other than superhero movies. Between 2000 and 2005, Marvel brought some of its most iconic comic book characters to the big screen, including the X-Men, Spider-Man, Daredevil, Hulk, Punisher, and the Fantastic Four. And starting with 2008's Iron Man, it began combining characters and plot lines in its films and later television shows to create the wildly successful Marvel Cinematic Universe. Some successful action movies and franchises did debut in the early 2000s. The two-volume Kill Bill series, an artsy cross between a martial arts film and the type of over-the-top action and gore that only Quentin Tarantino can deliver. The Fast and the Furious franchise and the Jason Bourne series are notable exceptions to the general lull in the traditional action movies. Then, in 2008, Taken was released. Following in the footsteps of Die Hard, Taken starred Liam Neeson, a man whose acting chops were never in dispute. The film has a relatively simple plot. They took his daughter, he'll take their lives. He may not look like Rambo, but he proves to be a one-man army all the same. I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. Taken led to two sequels, and Liam Neeson ended up making a career out of Taken-type movies in which he has to fight someone or something. The Ice Road being but the latest example. More importantly, Taken led to a revival of the action movie genre with iconic films such as John Wick and Mad Max Fury Road following in its footsteps. Now, with a variety of streaming services spending big money on content and theaters starting to welcome back moviegoers, the future looks bright. 2021 will see a number of John Wick-type movies such as Nobody and Boss Level. Big action franchises are also continuing. Fast and Furious 9, Top Gun, Maverick, The Matrix 4, and the latest James Bond film are all set to be released. But as history has taught us, it is often the one that nobody sees coming that ends up capturing the hearts and minds of fans for decades to come.